Hello curious minds, have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in space, not just on a spaceship but in a whole world built among the stars? Today we're talking about O'Neill cylinders, giant spinning habitats that could actually be humanity's future home, let's check it out. So what exactly is an O'Neill cylinder? Imagine two massive hollow cylinders floating in space, each about 20 miles or 32 kilometers long and 4 miles or 6.4 kilometers in diameter. These cylinders rotate in opposite directions to counter any gyroscopic effects, ensuring stability and precision in their orientation. Their rotation is crucial to keep them pointed towards the sun, harnessing solar energy efficiently. These cylinders aren't just empty tubes. They're designed to be self-contained worlds, complete ecosystems with their own weather systems, agricultural areas and residential zones. Pretty wild, right? These habitats would have everything humans need to survive and thrive from fresh air and water to food and entertainment. Achieving this level of self-sufficiency requires sophisticated technology to recycle air, water, and nutrients. The idea comes from Gerard K. O'Neill, a physicist who, back in the 1970s, asked a bold question. Could humans live in space permanently? His answer? Yes, but only if we built habitats like these. O'Neill's groundbreaking ideas were not just theoretical musings, they were backed by rigorous scientific research and practical designs. Back then, while teaching physics at Princeton University, O'Neill challenged his students to think beyond the confines of Earth. He tasked them with designing large-scale space habitats, pushing the boundaries of what was considered possible at the time. The goal? To prove that even with the technology available at the time, creating a self-sustaining space colony wasn't just a fantasy, it was within our reach. O'Neill's students came up with innovative designs that laid the groundwork for future space habitat concepts. O'Neill's designs aim to address Earth's growing population and resource challenges. Now you might be wondering why cylinders? While spheres and other shapes have been proposed, cylindrical structures offer unique advantages, particularly when it comes to creating large, habitable surfaces and efficiently scaling the design. The cylindrical design offers a brilliant solution to a fundamental challenge of living in space gravity. By rotating the cylinder, we can create artificial gravity along its inner surface. You see, without gravity, our bodies would experience muscle and bone loss, not to mention a whole host of other health issues. Prolonged exposure to zero gravity can lead to severe health problems, making it essential to find a way to simulate gravity in space habitats. O'Neill's ingenious idea was to create artificial gravity through rotation. By spinning the cylinders at a specific speed, the apparent force generated by rotation would push objects outwards, creating a feeling of gravity along the inner surface of the cylinder. This would allow humans to live and work comfortably, just as they do on Earth. The simulated gravity would not only make daily activities easier, but also help maintain the health and well-being of the inhabitants. The O'Neill Cylinder represents a bold vision for the future, where humanity can expand beyond Earth and thrive in the cosmos. Alright so, we know what an O'Neill Cylinder is but how would we actually build one? The engineering behind these space habitats is a whole different game. First let's talk materials. We're not building a skyscraper here. We need materials that are both lightweight and incredibly strong. Think carbon nanotubes, graphene, or even exotic alloys manufactured in space using asteroid-mined metals. These materials would form the backbone of the cylinder, providing the structural integrity needed to withstand the stresses of rotation and the harsh environment of space. Though carbon nanotubes are still in the early stages of development, they could one day make large-scale space structures a reality. Once the materials are figured out we need to assemble the cylinder. Since launching something the size of a city into space isn't feasible with today's rockets, the construction would likely need to be done piece by piece in orbit. This means sending smaller components to space, and then assembling them with the help of robots and astronauts. Structural integrity is another huge challenge. The cylinder must withstand the stresses of its own rotation. As the cylinder spins to create artificial gravity, the entire structure experiences immense centrifugal forces. These forces must be carefully managed so that the cylinder doesn't collapse or get deformed over time. Engineers would have to design reinforced joints and rigid supports to ensure the stability of the habitat. The cylinder's outer walls would also need to be insulated to protect it from temperature fluctuations in space and to shield it from radiation. Next up is maintaining the environment inside the cylinder. A self-sustaining habitat means we need to create Earth-like conditions, air, water, food, and a stable climate. That requires robust life support systems to handle everything from recycling oxygen and water to managing waste. We'd also need an artificial atmosphere within the cylinder that simulates Earth-like pressure and protects from cosmic radiation. Solar panels would provide the bulk of the energy, while mirrors could direct sunlight into the habitat to simulate day and night cycles, just like on Earth. And then there's the issue of gravity, or, more accurately, simulating it. 
As we've discussed, the O'Neill cylinder creates artificial gravity by spinning. But how do we control the spin? The rotation speed must be carefully calibrated to simulate gravity without causing issues like nausea or disorientation for the inhabitants. Too fast, and the centrifugal force would become unbearable. Too slow, and you wouldn't have enough gravity. Engineers would need to use advanced computer systems and sensors to monitor and control the rotation and the level of artificial gravity. Finally, we have to consider the human factor. Building a space habitat is one thing but making it livable is another. The design needs to account for comfort, recreation, and social well-being. It's not just about survival, it's about thriving in space. That means creating spaces for agriculture, greenery, and open areas to mimic Earth's environment. Living spaces need to be designed to handle the psychological effects of living in a confined space for extended periods. There's also the issue of microgravity. Even in a rotating cylinder, there would be microgravity zones near the center of the cylinder. These would need to be carefully managed for things like medical care and research. So, can we engineer an O'Neill cylinder? The technology we need is still years, maybe even decades away from being fully realized. But the concept is based on real physics and engineering principles, and the progress we're making in material science, robotics, and space technology brings us closer every day. Who knows? One day, we might just see these massive, rotating space cities become a reality, providing a new home for humanity beyond Earth. Alright, imagine waking up in your cozy apartment. You look out the window, and instead of your neighbor's house, you see a lush, green field stretching upwards. Welcome to a typical day in an O'Neill cylinder. Remember, these cylinders are massive, simulating Earth's gravity. You could be living miles away from the central axis and still feel that familiar pull. Thanks to the cylinder's rotation, artificial gravity would feel like Earth's along the inner surface. Near the central axis, you'd experience weightlessness, useful for zero-gravity research, recreation, or transportation. You'd go about your day. Maybe grab some breakfast made from fresh produce grown right there in your cylindrical world. Residential zones would feature futuristic homes with open layouts, climate control, and windows providing views of the artificial sky or outer space. Agricultural zones would use advanced hydroponics and vertical farms to grow crops efficiently, recycling water and nutrients. Robots would handle much of the work, though human oversight would remain essential. For recreation, parks, forests, and artificial lakes would offer activities like hiking, kayaking, and sports. Communal areas might host concerts, festivals, or even space tourism events. Work in daily life would include a variety of jobs from maintaining life support systems to teaching and research. Challenges like resource management, emergencies, or adapting to a sealed habitat far from Earth would require careful planning and technology. Still, life inside an O'Neill cylinder offers a blend of Earth's comforts and the excitement of living in space. Now let's talk brass tacks here. Why even consider building these colossal rotating habitats in the first place? Well, for starters, space, we need more of it. As our population continues to grow, Earth's resources are becoming increasingly strained. O'Neill cylinders offer a solution, providing vast new areas for human habitation and resource development. Imagine harnessing the power of the sun with massive solar panels lining the exterior of the cylinder, providing clean and virtually limitless energy. And let's not forget about the potential for mining asteroids and other celestial bodies for valuable resources, further reducing our reliance on Earth. But perhaps the most compelling argument for O'Neill cylinders is their potential to safeguard humanity's future. In the event of a catastrophic event on Earth, whether natural or human-made, these self-sustaining habitats could serve as a backup plan, ensuring the survival of our species. These are the good points, now let's talk about the bad ones. First, the sheer size of an O'Neill cylinder makes construction a monumental task. Gathering materials likely from the moon or asteroids and assembling them in space would require advanced robotics, automation, and infrastructure that we are still developing. It would also involve astronomical costs developing the necessary technology, transporting materials, and maintaining the habitat would require international cooperation and long-term investment on an unprecedented scale. Then there's radiation. The outer shell of the cylinder would need to incorporate advanced materials or shielding, such as layers of regolith or water, to protect inhabitants from harmful radiation. Systems for recycling air, water, and nutrients must be highly efficient, and even minor imbalances could threaten the habitat's stability. Living in a confined artificial environment far from Earth could impact mental health. Social structures would need to ensure harmony among inhabitants with spaces designed to reduce stress and prevent isolation. Not to mention that life in an O'Neill cylinder would rely heavily on advanced technologies for energy, air, water, and food. Any failure in these systems could lead to catastrophic consequences, making redundancy and maintenance critical. While the challenges are immense, so are the potential rewards. The technology required to build an O'Neill cylinder would drive innovation, and international collaboration could make these habitats a reality. 
Now let's look ahead. What role could these massive habitats play in humanity's future, and how might we actually bring them to life? Building an O'Neill cylinder is no small feat, but with the rapid pace of technological progress, it's becoming increasingly plausible. A crucial first step would involve mining resources from the moon and asteroids. The technology required for O'Neill cylinders overlaps with advancements already being made today. AI and machine learning could help optimize life support systems and manage the complex ecosystems inside the cylinders. Fusion energy, if perfected, could provide a virtually limitless power source to supplement solar energy. Additive manufacturing or 3D printing might allow us to construct these enormous structures in space with unprecedented efficiency. These cylinders could be more than just homes, they could serve as hubs for deeper space exploration, and the life in them would challenge us to rethink how societies are structured. The ultimate vision is a future where O'Neill cylinders are scattered across the solar system, each one a thriving hub of human activity. Imagine interconnected colonies orbiting planets and moons, trading goods, sharing knowledge, and working together to expand the human presence in space. How cool is that? Bringing O'Neill cylinders to life won't happen overnight. But the rewards? A chance to redefine what it means to be human, breaking free from Earth's boundaries, and embracing our potential as explorers of the universe. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will our spacefaring civilization. So, what do you think? Would you want to live in a floating city among the stars? Or does Earth have everything you need? Let us know in the comments, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this trip into the future, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss an adventure. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.